Okay. Okay, so these are the two books that you are looking at. And then uh, today we're going to look at uh, chapter one, Introduction to CFT. We're going to uh, oh. look at a few, these four things. So the first thing is that uh, we're going to look at what is Workbench, ANSYS Workbench. And then we're going to look at uh, a few format of uh, ANSYS that can handle. Uh, oh. Then meshing tools and uh, post-processing tools. Okay, right. So, um, I think you should you are familiar with the uh, this logo and um, Yeah. So we need to need to know the objective, right? A few questions that before we use uh, NCS, these are the few questions that we need to ask ourselves. So the first one is that what is the objective of your analysis? Like what what you want to do with this software? Yes. Uh, what you want to analyze? For example, do you want to analyze structure? You want to analyze uh, thermal? You want to analyze electrical, electromagnetic, or fluid, right? You have, you have to know which which category that you want to go to. Then, uh, you what kind of uh, system that you have? Do you want to simulate the whole system, uh, for example, the whole wind turbine, or you only need to so concentrate on a particular section of the wind turbine, for example? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So these are the, the first two questions that you should know, right? So, and then because if you if you do, cannot answer the first and second one, uh, even though you open up the ANSYS, you do not know the first step where to, which function to use. Uh, and you, you might use the wrong, uh, wrong analysis domain if you do not know your objective and also the, the physical system that you try to model. Uh, so these two uh, are the important questions that you should ask yourself or maybe uh, during your FIP presentation, these are the things that the examiner will look at. Are you using the correct correct uh, tools or not? Or correct direct, uh, is your simulation run in the correct way or not? Uh, then the third question is that, uh, what is the detail, right? how much detail that uh, you want to look at? Right? Or you want to look at like for example if you if you if you simulate a wind turbine mm -hmm. then uh, do you want to simulate a simplified version of wind turbine blade or not or you just want to want to simulate uh, a, a simple simplified uh, model so uh, you should know then um, uh, the next one is on the mesh means the less solution that you have uh, you, you, you you want to have this is the mesh right Final element uh, mesh. Um, then yeah. Okay. Then the next one is that um, you look at the accuracy of the of the results. So basically, we will consider these four domain are uh, four four things. So on the screen, you will see there are four things there. So the first one is the the type of the problems. Uh, is it your problem is time dependent or not? Then is it a linearly uh, does your object when when you apply forces does the object behave linearly to the force or is a non-linear uh, problem? For example, you simulate a a, a flow inside the, the our 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 blood vessels, right? So uh, mm -hmm. or you simulate blood blood is a non-linear non-linear uh, fluid. So uh, you have to be careful on all these kind of uh, things. And then, um, um, what are the simplification or assumption when you run the simulation? So these are the four things that you need to balance, because if you go too deep, then the time of simulation will increase, and also the error will also increase also, All right? And look at type of problems. So there are a few. First one is that structural analysis, like you see on the screen now. So uh, if you're simulating a structure problem like a bike bicycle truss and all this, and then are you simulating a, a, a heat transfer problem? So for example, you're simulating a, 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 the conduction process on the heated plate here. And this, uh, and this uh, heat transfer that you, that you see on the screen here is, is a 2D problem. So, and then the structure and this one is a 3D problem. So it depends on the complexity that you want to go through. So one is 3D, one is 2D. Another one is the fluid, uh, fluid flow in a 3D domain. 
So uh, you, get, you need to, and then the, 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 the photo here is that it's going to simulate in a symmetrical way. So you can see the, the, the diagram here, it, you, you cut the, di the, di the domain into half because the left hand side and right hand side is actually the same. So when you simulate it, then you only need to simulate uh, half of the, the, the model. Okay. And then another one is on the mass transport means that there is a moving, uh, changing in the density, density of the, uh, uh, the fluid. So this one is uh, uh, a channel, a fluid, uh, open channel that the fluid flow. And this one is a 2D analysis, two di dimensional analysis. Uh, another one area is that um, electromagnetic potential, and this one is on the satellite uh, satellite uh, plate there. So you can see that uh, when the satellite move uh, working, so there are some electromagnetic uh, potential that generated uh, through the process. So oh. what happened? So these are the five main problems that you can see uh, that we can simulate. Uh, in the using by using ANSYS. Um, what about time dependent? So if your analysis changes, the result will changes when you change the time. For example, if you simulate a, a structures analysis like the one you see on the screen here, so you will see that the loading uh, or the reaction of the body is changed according uh, to the time, then you need to consider a uh, time-dependent analysis. Okay. Um, uh, the first one is loading. Second one is temperature. So if your temperature is changing by the time, so like this uh, uh, on the screen here, so you'll see the, the, the temperature surrounding the, the, the plate here is changing when you change the time. So t equal to zero, t equal to 10 seconds will be different. So you need to be careful when you need, when you need to simulate something that uh, it is time dependent. So most of the time now today, uh, we look at time dependent problem. Uh, body changes phase also. Huh? So it means that there's a change of uh, material phases. So for example, you, you simulate the, the, the vaporization of uh, of uh, water inside uh, a compressor. So um, you need to be careful on the changes of the material phases. Okay, this is a time dependent. And another one is a non-linearity. So the one, the graph that you see on the screen is on the mechanical property. Uh, the graph is stress versus strain. So it means that if the material do not act uh, linearly, so means that uh, if you apply stress and then you let go, you will not return to its original shape. Okay. Um, if you simulate on the plastic material polymer, then uh, you need to consider non-linearity. Okay. Uh, there are few category of uh, non-linearity area here. The first thing, the first one is the geometric. The second one is the material. Geometric means. Uh, it involves the action of deflection and also rotation. So for example, you're simulating a, a, a fishing rod, like right, you see on the screen here. So um, different parts of the fishing rod will behave in a certain motion. Uh, it will involve deflection and rotation when you go fishing or when there's a loading at the end of the uh, rod. So, this one fall under geometric non-linearity cases, right? Another one is on the, yeah, also stress stiffness also. Material non-linearity, if you, for example, plasticity, uh, chip behavior, uh, viscous elasticity, uh, non-linear elasticity, uh, and one more is hyper elasticity. So, um, in general, if you talk about material non-linearity, it means that it behaves like a plastic. As long as the, 
this one is more on the mechanical, uh, physical body. Means if you if you simulate something on the heat, uh, on the uh, metal or some of the plastic material, then uh, you need to be careful on the material non-linearity. So there's a function that you can uh, select in ANSYS uh, if you want to simulate something that uh, behave uh, in their mechanical property, uh, non-linearity in their mechanical property. Okay. So in the for non-linearity, you have two two types uh, of non-linearity: geometric or material. Okay. Um, another one is just. Uh, this one, this diagram that you see on the screen here is more on a manufacturing simulation where uh, you do, for example, soldering or machining. So you need, you want to simulate uh, what happened in the, in the machining process, for example. So you have uh, three material here. Uh, the one that I show on the screen here is you have material one in active mode. So meaning you simulate the load on material one, and then you high material two and three in the first process. Second one, when the second load come into place, then you activate material two and three in the simulation. So uh, these are the things that uh, you need to consider in your simulation uh, analysis. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, and then simplification is on the uh, detail or assumption. Um, there are four things uh, when you when you want to summarize or want to uh, have a simplification or assumption. So you look at symmetry symmetry problems. So if your if your model the three D model you want to simulate is. Uh, is symmetry, then you can do simplification. So symmetry in the area of geometry, symmetry in the area of material, symmetry in the loading, symmetry in the free body diagram, uh, in the free free uh, degree of freedom. So these four four things, when you look at your model, 3D model later on, or 2D model, and then you try to look at their geometry, their shape, and look at their material property, you look at the loading, the stress that apply on the model itself, does it symmetry or not? For example, if you're simulating a water bottle in under the atmospheric pressure, then uh, it's a symmetry problem. Then uh, degree of freedom. Uh, okay. So the first example that we have is on a geometry. So if you can see on the screen here, we have uh, three, uh, four types of uh, symmetry uh, cases. The one on the left here is asymmetric cases, the one in the green color, asymmetric. Uh, the second one is rotational symmetry problems. The third one is planar or reflective uh, uh, symmetry condition. The fourth one is translation or repetitive uh, uh, symmetry problems. So each one of it, uh, will help you to simplify. If you have this kind of component, then you can simplify your your anal your your simulation steps. Okay, so uh, this one on the asymmetric problems. So if you have the first one, the the green color one. So meaning if you rotate the the object and you move around, actually all the cross section area is the same. So uh, in this case. If you want to use uh, any simulation software, uh, you don't need to run in the 3D modeling. You can go and, and simulate in a 2D, two-dimensional analysis because uh, uh, it is uh, asymmetric uh, problems, okay? So it's also um, one of the uh, popular question when you go to conference to present your uh, paper, uh, people will ask, or maybe before you submitting your draft, uh, when you reach the, the, the publisher, the chief auditor will look at uh, whether you know already done the simplification steps or not. So if you're simulating a, a asymmetric 
problems and and you're still running 3D modeling, uh, it's still fine. It's only you raise a question why you don't do it in the 2D dimensional, do 2D analysis because uh, it's a symmetric problems. Okay. Um, and you go to work also, all right? Sometimes it will save your simulation times. Okay, this is the first one, uh, asymmetric problems. Second one is a uh, rotational symmetry that like you see on the screen here, meaning you see the, 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 the blade of protruded uh, component here is repetitive. Okay, so what you can do is that uh, you only need to simulate, uh, like you cut, you cut uh, by using like a pizza, how you how you cut the pizza. So you only need to simulate individual component or portion of this one. You don't need to simulate the whole thing. Then uh, this one is a reflective planner. This one also the same approach also. You simulate um, on individual, uh, uh, for example, this individual component. Um, and of course, this one, when you simplify, we assume that the loading is the same. Uh, you want to simulate, uh, want to simplify your simulation, you have to look at the, the four the four main points that we mentioned just now. You look at the geometry, you look at the material property, you look at the loading, you look at the free body, the, your degree of freedom. So these are the four, four main um, uh, components that we consider when you want to simplify our simulation. Geometry, material, uh, the loading and the free body, uh, the, the, the degree of freedom. Uh, okay. So this is the repetitive translation, means if you have a valve with a repetitive component, you only need to simulate uh, one of the, one set of the, the valve here. Okay. Um, and then if you do a 2D symmetry problems, so meaning, you, let's say you have a plate, a square plate with a um, hollow in the middle, and the loading here is symmetry, so it means the loading on the left and right is the same. So in your simulation step, you can do simplification by only simulate quarter of the component here. You don't need to simulate the whole set. Okay, you only need to simulate either this portion, or this portion, or this portion, or this portion then uh, your simulation step will look like this. I mean, your simulation model will look like this. Okay, if you have a quarterly symmetry cases. Second one, you see when you're forced, the same, same structure, but your loading change a little bit. So in this case, you cannot do quarter symmetry analysis, but you can do half. You can do half of the structure, either left-hand side or right-hand side with the loading on one of the end here. Okay, so when you do simplification, be careful on the loading on your object, uh, whether it's symmetry or not. So you need to check. Uh, um, next one is on the material component. So on the, on the screen here, you will see a square with a hollow shape. Uh, however, this object consists of two types of material. Material one, is the same material on the first half here. First half here, material one. And second material is on another half. However, the loading, the loading here is symmetry on both sides. So you, you, if you want to do simplification, you cannot do this orientation. You cannot do uh, this one is the wrong simulation, but what you can do is you you do the one you see on the screen here, where you cut the material uh, the the model into half, where you simulate material one and material two, with the loading on both side, and there is a constraint uh, in the middle. So this is how you simplify your model in the symmetry cases. Okay. And if you do not have a symmetric case, then you need to simulate the whole the whole system 
or the or whole model. For example, this this is example where you have a square plate with consists of two material, and the loading is uh, not not uh, not well distributed. So you cannot simulate you cannot simplify it further, but you have to simulate the whole model. So it depends on uh, the four main main point again. You need need to look at the geometry, material, the loading, and the degree of freedom that you have. Uh, so it's very important uh, when it comes to uh, examiner stage. You will also look at all this whether you you simulate in the correct way or not. Do you simulate your model correct or not? So these are the thing that are going to to uh, the examiner is going to ask you. So you need to be careful whether you simplify enough or you able to consider a uh, simplification process in your simulation. OK. Um, OK. OK, so um, this 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 diagram that you see on the screen here, it just explain what is the benefit uh, if you if you if you do simplification. For example, if you do meshing on a 3D model and you run a simulation using 3D model, um, this example is that you will see that this one consists of 18,000 of uh, tetrahedral shape of uh, mesh. And the node that you have is point to point. This is a node in a simulation. Uh, tetrahedral is a simulation shape that you will have. You can have square shape. Uh, this uh, this uh, tetrahedral is the is the very popular shape that we use in the meshing. You can have a lots of kind of uh, shape uh, to to simulate. So if you do meshing on a three D model, uh, you will have eighteen thousand for this for this example. Uh, you have eighteen thousand of uh, unit or cell, and then consists of five thousand nodes. So imagine you want to run simulation, your computer going to uh, need a lot of time to simulate or to solve at least 5,000 equations uh, in one go. So you're going to load your computer power uh, to solve uh, uh, at least 5,000 equations. And then if you look, if you simplify uh, in by using uh, 2D model, same same uh, same scenario or same case but one is in 3d one is in 2d the 2d one is on the right hand side so this model only give you 300 near to 400 uh, quadrilateral element uh, and also it only have 400 about 500 nodes so it's only your computer only solve like around 500 equation uh, so the time to solve uh, for the same case uh, it reduced uh, uh, quite a lot huh? if you compare 3D model and uh, a simplified model like this. And again, this is an example of a asymmetric uh, model. Huh? So, okay. Uh, the next one, look at the mass density. Um, mass density means that you, if you have a body, you do discretization means you break into a small element. So mass density means you break into how many uh, element that you're going to. What is the less resolution of your simulation? Okay. So if you have a lots of number of element, for example the one that I draw on the screen here. So model A, let's say you only have 100 element. Model B, you have 300 element. So of course, model B will give you a better approximation of uh, your solution, means a, a, a better projection. However, if you do not set things right, it's going to give you a loss of error means that if you 
if you draw wrongly, your, the 3D model you do not uh, input correctly, one element will have a small amount of error. You try to imagine you times 300, 300 times of your error is going to be a lot. Huh? So for example, you only, the error is very small. For example, the error is 0 0.01. If you times 300, it's going to be uh, around plus minus 3 mm already. So it's quite a lot. Huh? So um, this is just a general idea on uh, when you want to set the, the number of mesh in your simulation later on. So be careful on the setting. You need to uh, be firm on the model that you use and then the setting that you set in the software. So of course, there are some guidelines on how to reduce the, the error or give you a better approximation in your results. So there are a few techniques. Uh. So there are three, three techniques here. A, a little bit textbook uh, definition here. So the first one is called adaptive. Adaptive meshing means that uh, you check uh, the, the analysis results um, or the, the, the way you simulate, you only consider on a linear, linear static structure and steady state thermal analysis only, all right? So if you do adaptive meshing, is only apply for linear static structure analysis or thermal analysis. Okay, so there also a setting there uh, in the software whether you want to adopt adaptive meshing or not. So you need to you need to select uh, if you if you're simulating a, a a structure a mechanical structure then um, then you'll only look at linear static structure analysis then you can you can choose the first one. The second one is a uh, mass refinement test with the uh, NC software itself. Mean that uh, you run two results together. For example, the first result you run with the mesh number, for example, 100. And then you compare, you run the second model with mesh number 300. You compare the analysis results, uh, model A and model B. Uh, the model A, model B only difference is the uh, mesh number. So if the result, if you do comparison, the result is almost same, means that less than uh, less than three percent error, uh, then it's acceptable, right? It's acceptable means that um, if you run simulation using mesh number one hundred um, and you compare mesh number three hundred. The error is the differences is only three percent. Then you can run in a lower number, meaning in the in the uh, in the case itself you can run in the uh, hundred number of cell uh, in your mesh analysis. The third one is sub modeling, meaning you break. For example, you break uh, this model A. Let's say the mesh, total mesh number is 100. You break this model into a few component. A, B, A1, A2, A3, A4. And then you run simulation uh, individually, meaning you have four set of uh, results. Uh, and, and when you do a sub modeling, meaning the mesh number is going to increase. For example, uh, uh, mesh number A1, A2, until 4. Each one you use mesh number 100. So you can imagine that uh, it can generate a better results compared to the uh, uh, very big picture here. Of course, the sub modeling only limited if you want to do uh, uh, optimization or you want to do um, uh, local analysis or localized mesh refinement, means that uh, you only want to do uh, focus on a particular section of the model, okay? So for example, you want to look at um, this 3D model, you want to look at what happened to 
this particular area or inner ring of the head here. You want to look at what happened here. So what you do is that you increase the meshing in this particular portion. So software will allow you to change the mass number in this particular portion. Okay, so this is called detailing on the on the meshing type. Okay, so yep. All right, and then what else? Okay, so uh, for NC software, um, it consists of two main uh, two main stages. One is at the beginner, uh, uh, not beginner, start level or begin level. Another one is on the processor level. So these are two big uh, principal stage that we have uh, for ANSYS. All right, uh, we call it a primary level. So we have begin, begin level and processor level. So begin level only, uh, only deal with uh, enter and exit process meaning uh, when you start the program uh, you will enter into begin level all right then if you close the program then it will also exit from the begin level so when you start to input data it will go into processor level which really consists of this uh, uh, this five component this simplified process so you will have the preprocessor all the software have pre preprocessor uh, or preprocess uh, stage, then you go to solution, then you go to after process or post process, then uh, it will look at a uh, time post process and other process also. So in the ANSYS, you have a lot of process that you can select, All right? Post process, uh, okay, let, let look, look at what are the details. Um, at the beginning level, for example, be before you start uh, uh, the an analysis, you will be asked to, to create a new project, a uh, new project name or new new component name, for example. For ANSYS, most of the time you need to include, you need to input uh, a new project name. So this is the begin level for ANSYS. Uh, then, uh, Processor level means to you do your analysis. Okay, three main steps in ANSYS analysis. Uh, you do model, you generate a model, you solve it, then you look at the results. Okay, of course this one is uh, uh, is a, a general, very general process uh, or, or main step that we have in ANSYS. You start with a model, then you 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 solve it, you get the, the solution. I mean, you solve the equation, you do meshing, and then you do analysis. Then, or you input the the bounding lay, uh, bounding condition here. You run the then run the calculation, and then you get uh, results. So these are the three main stages that you experience. Okay. Um, so in ANSYS also uh, there are some checkpoint. For example, when you do your um, 3D model and you do meshing at the first step here, um, if you have error in your mesh, you are not able to proceed to the later two process. So ANSYS will prompt you when you run your mesh. It will tell you that the, the, the mesh uh, uh, not able to generate or there is an error in a certain uh, node uh, that you, that the the mesh is not compatible so and then you go to solution so solution here is you start inputting the load the load the the other parameter here and then let, let it run according to model that you want it to run results also you can set uh, what kind of result you want to to look at for example for mosses uh, and uh, results uh, uh, the changes of volume for example so all these you can do setting. All, right. all these are, are the things that you will, you will see in all these things. Um, model generation usually at the pre-process uh, or pre-processor stages. Solution will be in the 
solution stage and uh, re review the result will be on the post processor uh, time processor uh, stage. Okay, so these are more detailed. Lah. So when you generate uh, your model, these are the things that you need to define in the ANSYS. The first thing is the element type. All right, so element type, you have a simple node, two node. You have simple three node. And then you have a more complex, more than three node. And then you have a 3D problems. Three dimensional problems. So on. Okay. And also the one that we covered just now, the symmetric problem. Okay, if you have a symmetric problems, right? So for example, you have a cylinder. So you only simulate this section only okay so these are the element type you need to select when you run the simulation uh, and then the constraint or the loading material property so the software will ask you about what kind of material that you so, you, you you simulate so in your ANSYS on the right hand side column um, the, the, the 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 function tree tree there then you, you need to input the material. So you input material from the material library. Okay. And then you generate the model. You, you do the meshing for the model. So uh, for ANSYS, your model can be, uh, it can be from other CAD software also, or you can do it in the, in the software using modeler, the modeler function inside there. Um, The next one is uh, the, the, the process in getting the solution. So you need to define the analysis type. Uh, means you, you want to do, analysis type means you do structural analysis, thermal analysis, uh, fluid analysis, or electromagnetic analysis. Uh, so you need to know which type of analysis that you're running. And then what are the options that you, you do? Analysis option means the formula that you want to do. So when you click inside the, uh, uh, inside, uh, inside the ANSYS software, you're able to choose the type of analysis you want. And then after you choose the type of analysis, the window will open up and you can choose, uh, you can select or set up the analysis um, uh, accordingly. For example, you run a, a, a finite volume uh, analysis, then uh, FV, FVM analysis, then there's an option called, uh, do you want to run it using the turbulent model or not, uh, the, the K epsilon model or not. So these are the analysis options that you're going to choose up when, depending on the, the, the scenario that you want to run. Uh, specified bounding, bounding condition, this is the loading or the preset pressure or temperature. Huh? then you run it to get the results. A result uh, usually will, will tell you, for example, the contour by the color inside the uh, simulation results. Vector display, you can change into arrow form and all this. And you can even show the deformed shape after a certain loading. A deformed shape or there's a change of uh, fluid analysis. You will simulate wave uh, inside uh, wave from moving from the shore uh, away from the shore you can you can also simulate that using a uh, finite volume uh, method um, and also you can uh, export the result in the uh, excel form or tabulate tabulated uh, format okay so time history this one Okay, now then the next one, huh? the next one will be on the, the, the common file type, common file type that you have. Um, okay. 
So I think we stop here for a while. Go for a short break. Let me stop the recording. Oh, okay, sir.